Hey there, me again. Uh, as you can probably see, I'm sitting here in my Outlook calendar, and uh, one of the things that I regularly do is book meetings uh, with different people, and uh, I need to find times where people are available, and uh, a lot of people don't realize that there's a cool tool in Microsoft Outlook called the Scheduling Assistant, uh, which helps you to identify times that people that you need in your meeting are free so that you can invite them and know that uh, you're not going to get people saying, oh, sorry, I can't make that because I have a meeting clash. So uh, I thought I'd show you how, how to use that. And you can use it both in the desktop version of Outlook, which is what I'm using here, uh, but it's also in webmail version uh, and it's in a very similar place. Um, and I'll show you where that is in a sec. So let's say, for example, um, I'm looking at the 4th to the 8th of July, which is the first week of the school holidays. And for us in corporate offices, um, that's usually a fairly quiet time, not too hard to, to get people. Uh, but sometimes people aren't on deck, they've gone on leave. Uh, at other times, people have got meetings uh, and clashes and things like that. So let's uh, let's have a look at this schedule assistant and take a look at what it's all about. Uh, say I wanted to book something for, say, 1 p.m. on Monday the 4th. I could just double click on 1 p.m. there. I could say it's a, an hour long meeting, it's a half hour meeting, whatever it is. Um, totally up to you to set the duration. Let's say it's a half hour meeting. And uh, I'll give it a title. Um, this is an important meeting for not so important people. And that's the title that I've made it. And uh, let's just say the location is Microsoft Teams. Um, we'll just do it as an online thing. and. Uh, when you do uh, a Microsoft, when want to do a Microsoft Teams menu, you, you can either click this, or as soon as you click this Invite Attendees button, it actually turns it into a Microsoft Teams meeting automatically, which is really nice. Um, so here we're going to start saying who's required at the meeting. Well, let's just uh, get Joe Cohen in there. Let's get uh, Mark Greentree. He's a very busy person. Uh, we'll have a look at who else do we want? Uh, Greg Tardiani. And let's get Michael Clipsham, who's our, uh, whoops, there he was, Michael, who is our um, Microsoft Tenant Administrator. And what we'll um, do is try and organize a meeting for them at 1 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. on Monday the 4th. Now, I could just send this and hope that they're all free. Um, but with this scheduling assistant, you've got a really nice way of identifying if people really have that time slot free in their calendars. So uh, the way to get to it is to go up here to scheduling assistant. And what it will automatically do is put those required attendees in the list down the left. Uh, you can turn people on or off, like maybe some people aren't critical to be there. They don't have to be there. You can turn them on or off if you want to. And over here, oops, let's just go a little bit. So we're trying to book a meeting here for 1 p.m. And as you can see, we've got some grayness happening here and here for, these, um, for this person here. So Joe Cohen is hashed. What does that mean? Uh, and if you go down here, it's tentative. So he's actually got something blocked out in his calendar that says he may or may not be able to make that meeting. Um, so I could go and punt and say, look, everyone else can make that time, um, but um, Joe may not be able to. I could send it, the meeting invite off to him and he can decide whether he wants to come or not. But if I really need him there, then maybe I should be looking for a time slot where everybody is available. And uh, I can drag this um, box and move it around. Uh, I can either move the start time or I can move the, the whole thing, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, grab the end time and you can move the whole thing. Now it's not working either, but it doesn't matter. So let's say we want um, this time slot here. So 10 a.m. looks pretty good because everybody uh, is available at that point in time. Um, so I could now send this and be fairly comfortable that everybody is going to say, yep, I can make that time because that time is free. The purple time over here, as you can see, is, is busy. They've got something locked in their calendar and they're unavailable at those times. So you can see that some people don't have any time available on that particular day. Now, one question mark here, however, a lot of um, staff tend to take school holidays off or part of the school holidays off using their annual leave. So they may not be on deck at all. And when you see somebody whose calendar is completely empty, like Greg's is here, but you look at the next week and he's got stuff in there, there's possibly a question around, 
is he actually on deck at all during that week or not um, or on that particular day or not and uh, I'll, I'll explain why this might be showing up as blank because we do ask people in our calendars in their calendars to tell us when they're having flex days or when they're having days off and, and so on by blocking out the day and saying that um, that they're unavailable um, and that should then make that show as busy for the whole day and, and they're, they're not going to be able to do it um, but it's not necessarily the case that they do that properly so I'll show you as a second part of this video now. So this is how you use a scheduling assistant. When you're happy with the time, you hit the send button. It will send and hopefully everybody comes back and agrees to that meeting. Um, I'm not going to save that. I won't worry about it. But here we are in the school holidays. And here you can see there's a, a full event here that's a, a daily event um, that's been added for the entire week to say it's a school holidays. But say, for example, I wanted to have Monday off as a flex. I could right click here and I can choose a new all day event and I could say I'm on a flex I'm on a flex day or I'm on leave or, or whatever the case may be um, when you do this all day event which a lot of people do to um, to say that um, they're not going to be there for a particular day uh, they might block out entire weeks to say they're going to be on leave for the, for the whole week um, what it does is it creates this thing and it ticks this little box to say that it's all day but the other thing that you will notice when Microsoft Office or Microsoft Outlook uh, when you tell it that you're wanting to create an all day event it will automatically set that as free and what you do need to do is when you say that um, you're on a flex day that you're actually going to be out of office or you're going to be busy one of those two you need to you need to say because uh, that will tell anyone who tries to book an appointment with you that on that particular day you're not going to be available the default setting for an all-day event is free you need to understand that and a reason why that might be is because people put all-day events in their calendar that says wife's birthday um, or son's or wedding anniversary or whatever it might be on particular dates and it doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to be busy or away it just means that that's a reminder for you um, that that's that's a, an important day for you so it different all-day events could mean different things if you similarly if, if it's not you're not on leave um, but you're going on a, an all-day training course a professional learning course um, you would probably want to book the whole day as being um, busy or out of office because you're at a training course and therefore you won't be able to attend any meetings. Anyway, hope those two little tips were useful and I will see you in the next video.